Greetings, this is Jaunty Cat Graphics, and my name is Tyra Oliver, and I'm Tasia Willoughby. We have our notes here, so that's why we're looking down. Um, we just want to kind of keep ourselves on track, on track, on track with what we're going to say, because this might be a little bit long of a video. Uh, basically, we're going to come on here as kind of an origin story, because we realized in making the videos that we have and all the content that we've made on social media that we've never actually done a proper introduction of ourselves in a lot of our videos you just see our hands moving around and, and doing things all right um well as i said before i'm tasia um i do uh, acrylic paintings and ink and graphite drawings a lot of my work is actually mixed media where I combine mediums I do spec fiction so sci-fi steampunk uh, sometimes fantasy and what do you do Tyra well so I do a lot of graphite drawings um, I also do oil oil portraits um, my style, I would say, is a blend of Christian art and fantasy. It was 2013 when we really started investing ourselves into illustration and and we kind of figured out what we wanted to do. And we'll, we'll kind of go a little bit into how we figured out what our styles were and are a little bit later. We'll, we'll touch on that. But basically, mm -hmm. Johnny Cat was set up as a studio um and, and just kind of an extension of you know the different things that we wanted to do and we wanted to have a brand identity of some sort for when we started putting our work on mm -hmm. social media seriously right to make it more official you may have noticed we look alike that's because we are twins yep we're identical twins well we're supposed to be identical i don't think we look super identical right now <laughs> every few years we go through stints where we look really identical and sometimes we don't look that much like twins to be honest a couple of years ago we looked identical but i think we're getting back to not being identical it's, for a it while it depends on how we wear our hair and stuff, yeah but we are identical twins uh we're one of the we're two of those people who drew all of our lives drew when we were kids since we were toddlers yeah so um we would just when we were really small and we're going to insert pictures here of some of our stuff that we can actually find but we would just draw things that we thought of draw we would draw yeah. um copying cartoons and, and anime things. cartoons no, no not that not, not the anime yet, yet. Oh, when we, yeah. When we were in, like, elementary school and real little, oh, yeah. we wouldn't, we weren't so much into anime. Nope, so, not until, like, third grade or something. Yeah, third grade when we started watching Sailor Moon. Yeah, yeah, because of Toonami and all of it. Well, we were watching Sailor Moon before No, Toonami. before Toonami, because we're old. Yeah, we're going to date ourselves with all this. But, yeah, so we would, like, copy stuff. We had a set of encyclopedias. That, that we would read for fun because we're nerds. <laughs> yeah. And we would just copy the little pictures or just, you know, different stuff. We would just copy stuff that we like. Oh, yeah, we copy oh, Disney. Yep, yeah, Disney. Um, yeah, Lion King had came out, had just came out then. Um, stuff like Bambi. Not really the Disney princesses that much. Yeah, we would mainly copy the little animals and stuff like that. But uh, we would just make up our own little fun little cartoon people and just, you know, copy stuff. Pocahontas. We did copy a lot oh, of yeah. Pocahontas art and everything. And we had this little, um, when we were like in second grade or so, our parents had got us this little... Um, this little set where it had all the different colors of crayons. And oh, yeah. It was everything. Rose Art brand, I think. It mm -hmm. was a easel, toy easels. We each had one, and we would draw and that it had all the little art supplies. Yeah, our parents were pretty supportive. Our family were very supportive of us, you know, getting into art and, you know, drawing and all of that stuff. Yep. And actually, uh, I'll say this before we move along. When we were young, uh, we actually did... I would say elementary school age, we're like, oh, yeah, we want to be artists when we grow up. We were those kids. Yep. 
And if for some reason we didn't, and now we actually are artists. Yeah, don't go but, ahead, don't go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, so, um, yeah, third grade happened, and we started getting into anime through Sailor Moon, and our brother yep. had us watching Dragon Ball Z. And Voltron. Voltron and Thundercats, and, and some of that stuff would come on Cartoon Network. So we would copy it, and we make up our own little characters. And we play with Barbie dolls, so yep. that kind of got us into making up little yep. storylines story lines and all that kind of stuff. So we got into more middle school age. Uh, we really started getting more into anime. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't think we drew anything that wasn't anime that often. We, Occasionally we would, but we were super into anime, and we would get kind of offended when people would say, draw stuff other than anime but that's a whole nother video and we were not good at it like at all <laughs> yep you gotta find there's gotta be pictures of it around here but Man. it was very cringy you know typical um young kid we would anime build our person. characters we would really start getting heavy into giving our little characters like story yep, arcs backstories. And backstories and then it just we we did a whole expanded universe i would say starting at around about, what, 6th grade or so? We, um, 5th grade. Fifth it grade. was right before Hurricane Floyd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then, like, we come up, we would, we wouldn't do actual comics, but we would get a piece of paper and then, like, have the characters be saying stuff and the entire yeah. top ha half of the page, like, let me grab a, a blank paper here. Yeah, like a comic script. So, like, let's say we had a paper, like, right here. The characters would be, like, right here, just no backgrounds or anything. And then, like, this entire area <laughs> would be full yeah. of, of speech bubbles. Yeah, and it started out simple, but there's a few of them where the, where the speech bubbles are really out of control. And we ended up having to start numbering them. Yeah, we had, like, numbers, speech bubbles. We had all these systems worked out. Yep. And with our character sheets, we would have them all lined up and, uh, what was it? It was notebook there. Notebook paper. Yeah, uh, of course it was all in notebook paper. We were such plebes. But, uh, yeah, the characters would be all lined up. Uh, we measured to get them in scale properly by height. Uh, we had their names, um, age, sex, um, uh, their species. If it was like an alien or, a, you know, different animal type situation. We will put the species, their origin, uh, we will have their little uh, faction affiliation, and then on the top we will have an itty bitty writing their backstories. <laughs> It's so sloppy. You couldn't even fit that much information some, on the character. And at some point, we actually, with the all these different character sheets, because we probably had, like, at least 30 plus of these different groupings of characters. I never counted. I wonder and how many we had. No, more than, yeah, like 30 or 40. Right? But, yeah, it was crazy because, like, we had to add, like, different planets and timelines. Yeah. And we, we had to scrap the whole thing after, like, three years because we started in about fifth grade. Then we redid it again when we increased our skill level a little bit. And then we kind of revamped things about three years later, like, in high school. So we had, we, like, completely redid our expanded universe. And then we re started redoing it again um, when we were in college, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just said, oh, forget it. This is too much. Because then, you know, we got into implications of things. And how yep. it, it, just, it, was, it was a can of worms and we didn't feel like it. We were those kids who were drawing in classes and, and just, you know, because we didn't have all this newfangled smartphone technology and all this stuff when we were in school. So, you, you know, like, we, we would draw or, you know, sometimes write little... Yeah. We would maintain our expanded universe in our classes. Or at lunch. <laughs> which somebody that I went to... That I was in classes with a lot actually remembered that. <laughs> yeah. But, um... But, yeah, so also when we were maintaining our expanded universe, we did dabble in making our own comics. We yep. would, um... What else did we do, man? Um... We, we we did not do color. We did no color <laughs> at this this whole time period. Um, not even when we were in elementary school. Mm -mm. We maybe have 
three or four things total. And we didn't finish stuff either. But nope. as far as color, from when we were elementary school, we have made between us maybe six or seven things t total where we actually had in color. So if you look at our other work where we're doing these paintings and everything, like we weren't doing colorful things, like colorful art, like normal children yeah. when we were kids. Yeah, because that's the big caveat when we say, we were drawing our entire lives. It was uh, pencil. Yep. Yeah, don't get that intimidated about that because we were just drawing. So the color stuff, that's all new. We didn't start calling color and writing proper until we were adults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but when we were trying to make our whole expanded universe and, you know, because we wanted our stuff to look cool, you know, we, we were into, like, vintage dresses and fashion history and, and all of that stuff because we were into Barbies kind of along the same time when we were into anime a little bit. Yeah, when we started out with anime. So yeah. we combined those interests. Interest. Yeah, because we had, you know, we, we liked, like, frilly dresses and all the other little things that little girls liked. And we also liked action and everything. So we would just, you know, come up with, with a lot of things to kind of blend those two things. Which you might be able to pick up on our art now. We didn't do, like, backgrounds or environment. Only if we absolutely had to. And it was a struggle. So uh, most of our characters then were people floating in space, that kind of thing. And, um... Yeah, we did do, we got a lot of those how to draw manga books and the internet was still kind of new. We put our stuff on DeviantArt every once in a while. It, it wasn't, we didn't have Instagram back then, so you had to scan everything and go through that whole song and dance. Yeah, which we did have a scanner, right? It was bad, but yeah, we had a scanner. We saw, like, there were websites that would be like, kind of, oh, how to draw a face and stuff yeah. like that. And we actually started using uh, DA Deviant Art so that we could get critique. Yeah, we, we did kind of want critique and stuff like that. We wanted to get, we didn't have any sort of idea of being, by the time we were in, like, middle school, high school age, we weren't trying to be, like, pros. We just wanted to be good enough to make our, our stuff look cool. Now, if it did look cool or you know really expert level <laughs> that's a matter of subjective opinion <laughs> but yeah we we weren't we were just doing it for fun um so that pretty much wraps up our like school age level and experience or whatever oh uh, yeah one more thing about school we did take one art class when we were in 12th grade yeah because like during our entire school hit uh elementary middle school high school we well no no middle school and high school we had no no sort of imaginings at any point that we would actually want to do art as a as yep. career and or anything so we were like i'm not taking any art class because we we were trying to get into college so we could get in the medical field or something so we could make money oh that's a whole nother video um but we digress. Uh, also in school, uh, they had a limited amount of elective classes that you could take. You take your, you know, typical science, math, reading, and there you could take two electives where that would be your more frivolous classes that wouldn't be standardized tested. We always wanted to be in band, so we couldn't take band and art. We had to pick. And we were, yeah. had already been in band, so we just did that. Yeah, and, but, yeah, because, you know, with band, if we pick art, we couldn't be in band, because when are we going to play uh, clarinet in our own time? But if we had band, then we could have both. Yep, and we would draw during band class when we weren't, like, actively playing or anything. Our very last semester in high school, we had an art class, and the teacher that was doing that was um teaching the class was very good mm -hmm. he, i think he had did he ha i think he had an art degree mm -hmm. and one thing that he did he got us doing master copies and we dabbled in paint and he actually challenged us to one draw larger and also draw stuff without or you know render things without outlines which is not something that we really did Right, so that really kind of got us thinking outside the box from how we had been thinking before. We were really, af after that point, 
more so kind of going back to the fundamentals. Because one thing a lot of beginner child children, teenagers do, you see cartoons or anime and stuff, and you, you want your stuff to kind of look like that. But, you know, when you have your mind expanded into other areas, then it's like, okay, I have a much longer way to go mm -hmm. if I really want my stuff to, you know, be at that level instead. When we got into college, we were taking a lot of science type classes because we wanted to be in the medical field. Yeah. So, you know, we... So, yeah, that was not a very viable idea so we ended up changing our major to art well, anyway well okay so in that time when we were taking all the science classes and everything we and we were drawing yeah we were once still in drawing while. um once it, in a while speak for yourself well like okay so not as much as you would as a kid because you gotta yeah. study but like on weekends or stuff yeah yeah, because, um, you know, with college, it's just a higher workload. So, you know, you got to kind of work a little harder to fit it in there. And uh, we were still kind of doing our expanded universe a little bit. And summertime, we would, you know, kind of work on comics and everything. Still no color. We, we kind of got out of color. But we did kind of focus on some more of the basics during that time. <clears throat> we finally had access to Photoshop, but we had to use a mouse <laughs> ow never again yeah yeah so uh we didn't make too much progress with uh with photoshop at that point because we had the software but we didn't know to get the, like the the wacom tablet or anything <laughs> we changed our majors the third year in to art and um yeah we had we went all the way back to the basics. Oh uh, yeah, we had to cram in a lot of the, uh, a lot of the classes. Um, yeah, four years we had to cram into two years and a two, summer. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was a very good experience. We took a lot of life drawing classes. We actually got into drawing other types of objects. Finally, could take a legitimate color theory portraits. Now, our stuff didn't look cool at all. Like, yeah. I wouldn't point to that period and say that, ooh, our work then was so magnificent. Yeah, yeah but it was a good foundation to uh, learn how to study, how to, you know, do still lives and perspective and having a figure drawing was good. We would draw things, just basic things, shapes. And we, okay, so we, we did take some graphic design classes, well, yeah, because we had to, that was our major degree, uh, we have a concentration in design, and um, that, taking the graphic design classes was good, because one, we can actually, we design our, all of our own branding, yeah, um, on our sites, on, here on, on YouTube and everything, all that branding, the logos, and and all of that, any sort of computer graphics, yep. illustrator, we learned all that stuff, which was good to know. Um, it, it also helps you, as far as graphic design, it's been good because it helps you think in a more abstract fashion. And another excellent thing that we learned by actually majoring in art was art history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we dabbled in it and we had the encyclopedias when we were kids, but of course, uh encyclopedia with a teeny little boogaroo painting that big is not going to compete with a um, Azumanga Daya graphic novel or a shiny uh, Tenchi Muyu. There was actually a museum on the campus that we went to, so we would be seeing these works like Monet yeah. in person, and um, there was a museum in Durham. I don't. Did you go there? I never did. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, it was for your class that who went. Yeah, we actually drove, we're in North Carolina. So, um, the museum in Durham, um, my class, one of my art history classes, we actually drove there, and it, that was sort of a little trip. And, man, they had illuminate. they have illuminated manuscripts at the Nasher Museum in Durham, and those things... They revolutionized they, your they art. They revolutionized Yeah, you it. can look at our art and tell who went and saw that and who didn't. <laughs> yeah. And it just, when you see a seven foot tall painting that's been in the world since the 17th, since our ancestors have been on this continent, that is just nothing compares to that. Right? Yes. 
the fit like you know seeing computer art is is great that's got a good uh, that's always good but when you can see these amazing pieces of artwork that's you know the size of a room that somebody the person who made the artwork was alive in the 16 and 1500s that is amazing right isn't it sad when people discount art history like find something you like yeah i mean and, and then just know where you fit in with the whole you know tradition of art history and you're just you're part of this whole this whole centuries millennia old tradition it's just you know it's exciting and amazing and it you know it makes me feel awesome <laughs> but um but yeah so we we definitely got more into art history Tasia really because I didn't take this class but that, that class the architecture class. oh yeah the modern architecture that started in the mid 1800s and um, to contemporary uh -huh. oh yeah that one was pretty good uh, I remember that one too um yeah for the uh tests they weren't multiple choice we had to write essays about them I got into it and I liked that it was essays because then you had to really think and understand it it wasn't just dates for stuff yeah yeah and and again it kind of puts your your it puts you in the frame of mind that mm -hmm. you kind of inject yourself into the tradition and you kind of understand like you know you have the the modern art and then postmodern and mm -hmm. you know where your work is going to fit into yep. all of that yeah because we had took another one that was a uh, gothic architecture we and, both took that oh yeah we both took that one that one was very very helpful mm -hmm. again if you look at a lot of the stuff that i draw now then yeah you can tell it's in there i, I man i really integrated that into my consciousness exactly and i mean i guess if anybody wants us to we can get more into our opinions on like western art and, and art history at some point but, oh that's a big tangent yeah it's kind of a tangent we could get into yeah but, but i'm um, really but yep yeah, i'm really glad we understood art history more and anybody else i implore to definitely look at where your artistic field comes from so we graduated from college in 2011 and we had to get jobs yeah <laughs> yeah and we did that and also did more work with our fundamentals because once you get a degree in art that does not mean your art education stops that is just the beginning because you're not going to be a super pro master in three to four or six years that's nope. just not possible yep. unless you're some prod your prodigy genius which we're not <laughs> Yeah, and um, we were still very much, um, since 2011 up until now even, you know, it's a lot of self-study because when you're out there on your own and you don't have dual screen IMAX to work with and you, you just have to constantly challenge yourself and and um, set goals for yourself and, and be really deliberate about mm -hmm. self-study yeah. and, and what it is you want your art to be. Because that's the whole thing. When we first graduated, I know for my, did you apply for graphic design positions? Yep. I applied to a lot of them. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, they get them though. No, because, oh, man, we need to make a video on, like, um, art education. Art education and what, what to think about when you're trying to get a job or, or things of that nature. So, um, but yeah, basically once we got out, we were working non-art jobs, still working non-art jobs and um just doing a lot of work just making a lot of mm -hmm. work all the time yeah because uh that's the other thing too as far as prolonging your education or extending your education for the rest of your life is that um you have to keep going back over stuff because like um we said earlier when we started studying the fundamentals like i was doing perspective i don't know if you did perspective studies a little bit yeah in middle school and high school but i did and i'm still um doing scott robertson style drills now like you have to keep going back over it and also when you're doing finish work um again this is another can of worms but when you're doing finish work then it lets you see that 
this is more stuff that you need to be better versed at. So you're going to have to keep going back over it so it helps it to stick more and more. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as the last three or four years, we've been... Cause See, you get to a certain situ a certain crossroads. Oh, yeah, and I do want to point out that we have started using things like conceptart.org and, and, you know, yep. aggressively trying to improve since we changed our major to art in college. But um, ever s since then, we have, well, in the beginning, it was more so like start over, get a, a significant foundation in the basics. But I would say the last three or four years we've had to think more about creating an actual body of work because I you know I know for myself you know being married and you know I, I got a mortgage and everything I have to think more so what well, we both do at this point because the loans do <laughs> <laughs> we have to kind of think more so in actually having a career doing this you yep. see what I'm saying so in order to do that and um you know, you have to have a body of work. Mm -hmm. And not just homework -y stuff either, like legitimate artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have been more so uh, focusing on what do we want our artwork to look like. Yeah, and the, yeah that old... Making uh, something consistent. Yeah, that old what's my style sort of thing, but, you yeah. know, it can't be based off of a gimmick. Uh, it has to be more than just, oh, look, it's, this is a gimmick. I draw these eyes that look like that. You have to dig deep. Yeah, dig deep and really think about what it like. What type of art you, you kind of want to focus on. And you can do, like, a few different things, but the last several years, that's why I started doing oil paintings and things. Because, you know, that for me, that's really kind of the thing that I wanted to focus on. And, and just there are certain ideas that you'll find in, well, in both of our art, uh, where you, you keep seeing the same sort of themes, ideas, mm -hmm. and, and, and such constantly rehashed. Yeah, and you have to lean into that a lot. Yeah, you have to give the ideas and your um, proficiency with the medium, um, any ideas you may have, things you want to explore. Uh, double down in it, like the jack of all trades thing. That's that fine. Does and, not work. Well, it's fine right. if you're younger or you're like a kid or if it's like you're doing the homeworky style art drills. But as far as finish work. Uh, you're really not going to uh, develop the habit and the consistency within your body of work doing that. You're just always going to be all over the place. It's more like um, double down and explore and experiment. Say it like that. Yeah, really get in deep and, and really chew on the thing that it is you're trying to do. Um, and I think, you know, that's something that's really benefited us skill-wise lately. And just to kind of bring this all back, because uh, this video is getting kind of long. Oh, but, boy, very long. <laughs> um, yeah, we just kind of got back to where we started just doing things that we like. You yeah. know, letting our imagination take more effect now that we have a stronger basis in the fundamentals. Yeah, I feel like uh, the last two or three years, we're finally getting back to that point of art being this fun thing mm -hmm. where you throw down stuff and enjoy it. Except things can actually look cool and how you imagine it more because there is that foundation there. Mm -hmm. If you're in a situation like we were throughout our lives and, and you're trying to figure out what you want to be doing, uh, just just keep kind of just doing it. You yeah. know, if it's something, art is something you enjoy, yeah. just keep doing it. Yeah, you gotta give it a fair chance. Yeah, and don't feel pressured that you have to necessarily have it as a career or get in this particular area. Um, not everybody is gonna work for magic. Um, that's fine. Um, you know, it's a lot of different facets of being an artist. Just, just you know, keep, keep going at it, because that's what we did. Cause yeah. You're not going to be, yeah, you're not going to be super broke overnight. Yep, and we, we have a lot of bad work, um, a lot of just things that didn't work out. Um, I have a sketchbook that I, you know, half the stuff in here, a sketchbook in front of me, is just things that just didn't work or it looks okay but didn't know how to finish it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, people with different opinions about what you're doing. Uh, we're blessed to have friends and family 
that are very supportive of what we're doing. But that's not necessary either. And, th- and they weren't, you know, sometimes they weren't always as supportive as we would like. And, you know, if you're trying to become a professional artist, but you haven't got there yet, you know, you, you have to treat it like a job, even if you're not getting paid. And you, people around you are going to treat it as seriously as you do. Uh, if you have any questions um, or any of anything that we talked about that you'd like us to expound on in a future video, definitely leave a comment. Uh, we're, just, we're trying to come up with more content and uh, we have a slightly different video set up here. So it should be a little bit easier for us to, to kind of make different stuff. Uh, but we want to thank you for being on here. Yep, thanks for watching.